In order for all of these tissues, organs, and organ systems to function correctly, they have to have really dependable conditions, and those conditions need to not change too much. So our bodies have really special um, systems in place in order to maintain the internal conditions, and this is called homeostasis. That word homeostasis just means maintaining the internal environment of the body, in relative constancy, so it doesn't change very much. There will be little fluctuations that happen, um, but those fluctuations don't get out of control, and that way the cells of our bodies kind of know what to expect, what resources they'll have available, and it makes it a lot easier for them to coordinate with each other to do all of these very important roles. So what we need to do in this section is look at how homeostasis is maintained in the body. And primarily, it is maintained through what are called negative feedback loops or negative feedback control systems. Negative feedback control systems have four major components. We're going to start this slide very general. It'll be a little bit vague, and then we'll get into some specific examples on the next slide. So the four major components of a negative feedback control system are as follows. We have some type of variable that we are talking about controlling. So this could be uh, something like the temperature of the body, or it could be the blood sugar levels, or blood pressure. These are all things that need to be maintained in a fairly constant state. We don't want huge fluctuations in any of these, or that would, would be problematic. So that's um, the controlled variable. It's just the thing that we are talking about. Um, keeping controlled. There will also be something called a sensor or a receptor and this is essentially the thing that monitors the current value of the controlled variable. So the sensor is going to detect if there are changes in the controlled variable. We will also have what's called a control center. A lot of times this will be in the brain but not always. Um, the control center is what receives information from the sensor, and then the control center makes a decision. It, it decides whether um, whether the the variable is is at the value that it should be, or if it's getting too far off. So it compares um, to what's kind of called the set point of the body. If there is a difference between the controlled variable and the set point, then the control center will activate an effector. An effector is a thing that takes action and it does this in order to correct the imbalance that's going on. So let's just jump over to this general schematic over here. Let's say we have a set point for some controlled variable and let's say that the the controlled variable starts to dip too low. Okay, so what will happen is a sensor will detect that it will relay the information to the control center. The control center compares, okay, what's the set point? What's the current value of the controlled variable? If they're too different from each other, then the control center will activate an effector, and the effector does something in the body in order to bring um, the value of the controlled variable back up to where it's supposed to be. So this is all very general. Let's go ahead and look at some specific examples to help this all make sense, how a negative feedback loop works. Let's use the example of temperature. Okay, so we have, our bodies have, a set point that they like to be kept at. Of course it's possible to get too hot and it's possible to get too cold, um, but if that starts to happen, our bodies do things to try and counteract the change that's taken place. So let's say in this example, let's say instead of our temperature being at the set point, let's say it's a cold day outside and we've been out for a long time and our body temperature starts to drop too low. Okay, so what will happen in that case is there will be sensors that um, detect that fact. So in our case, the sensors would be present in the skin and also in internal organs. Um, those sensors, if they get activated, then they will send information to the control center, which happens to be in the brain. The hypothalamus of the brain is what um, helps to control body temperature. So the hypothalamus is going to compare, okay, what are the sensors telling me versus what is the actual set point that we need to be at? And if there's a significant difference between those two, 
then the hypothalamus will do a couple of different things. For one, it will activate your skeletal muscles. Um, it'll kind of override them, right? You aren't trying to move them, but your, your hypothalamus is going to make them activate. So your skeletal muscles will start contracting and relaxing very quickly. That's called shivering. And what that does is generates a lot of heat. This burns through a lot of ATP and helps to warm up those muscles. The other thing that's going on at the same time is the hypothalamus will cause the blood vessels to constrict near the surface of the body. And that just helps to bring the blood more towards the center of the body where it's warmer. Um, so this is helping to conserve heat, not let more heat leave the body from the surface. So both of those things put together will help to raise the body temperature back upwards um, to the set point. It was too low, but now it's going to raise back up towards the set point. And um, at that point, this signal will stop. Okay, so it's called a negative feedback loop. This has been active in order to correct something. And once it's corrected, the signal stops being sent, right? There's no more need for this corrective pathway to be activated. So that's an example of negative feedback. You can check out in the other extreme here what happens if we get too hot. Um, essentially the sensor communicates with the hypothalamus again, the control center, but the control center this time is going to activate some other things. Um, so the control center is able to distinguish whether we're too far above or too far below the set point. So a different set of, of um, effectors will be activated in that case. There are positive feedback control systems that function in human biology too, but they are far less common. Mostly we will be encountering negative feedback control systems. Um, most of the time positive feedback is not for maintaining homeostasis, but rather for accomplishing other things. And a great example of this is during childbirth actually. Um, so what happens during childbirth is contractions get stronger and stronger until finally the baby is expelled from the body. And that happens through a positive feedback loop. So the, the change um, is actually being amplified. The contractions get stronger until some end result is, is achieved. And there does have to be an end point for positive feedback loops. They can't just go on indefinitely. There has to be something that triggers an end to them. In this case, it's the birth of the child. Um, and then the positive feedback loop would, would stop at that point. So just to, to kind of complete the picture, yes, there are positive feedback loops, but they are not going to come up nearly as much as negative feedback loops.